Hey everyone, today we are taking a listen to the Strymon Zelza multi-dimensional phaser pedal. This is my first Strymon and my first Strymon review and I am uh, very excited. I was honestly a little intimidated because the nature and the reputation of Strymon certainly precedes them as kind of being on a different level when it comes to not only great effects, but effects that really deep dive into giving you a lot of options, a lot of features uh, at the highest level of use and, and what you can get out of them. Um, now, it is, as you would expect, a very, very high quality effect that gives you an awful lot of options. One of the first things I look for in a pedal like this is whether or not it sounds good. Because, you know, a pedal can have all the features in the world, but if, it, you know, if the tones aren't ones that inspire you, then it's like, what's the point? This one not only sounds good, but one of the things that I think about this, because, you know, I've seen a lot of people kind of talk about that. They're like, well, I don't know if I need a phaser. I don't know if I need a phaser that bad. Think of it as a phaser-based multi-effects unit, because this gets so many sounds and does it really beautifully and naturally. And uh, when you really stop and think about modulation, the difference between some modulations is really small and you see how much that comes out in a pedal like this how you know just kind of a, a few subtle tweaks and all of a sudden you know you're in a, a phaser now it's more like a vibe now it's like a rotary now it's like a chorus and and this one really brings the best of that out so we're gonna go over a bunch of different features on this now i will admittedly not get to everything on this pedal because it does so much and some of it will be lost on me. Some of it is stuff that I, being more of a layman when it comes to pedals, I, I like to plug in and get a great sound. And, you know, I certainly do a reasonable amount of experimentation, but when you see some of these people who have boards like a, you know, Star Destroyer Bridge Control Center, it's just, that's just not me. You know, I'm definitely uh, less is more when it comes to pedals, and I, I 
have used stereo rigs, you're listening to this in stereo in a number of different ways in this video, but you know, when push comes to shove, when I go and perform live, I don't tend to use stereo rigs. I tend to go, you know, pretty simple right into the amplifier and things, but this will do all that. But again, what I like about it is it gives you a great tone and it doesn't need to do all that in order to get the full use out of it. It just gives you a high quality phaser tone in ways that are easy to tweak, easy to get a good sound out of, can integrate into your rig really well. And if you want to deep dive into all the features and, and do more and explore with it, you can, but you can also just get a great tone right from the start. So you've got a four stage phaser, you've got a six stage phaser. These can work together, they can work separately, they are true stereo. There are a number of different ways that you can use this pedal in stereo. You can have one kind of go into each, you can have them both going at the same time, true stereo. Obviously you can use one or the other. You can have it where the six stage is running into the four stage. There's just a lot of ways you can do it. You can also just go mono out, which for parts of this video you are hearing just mono out, just a single cable out to a single amp just to kind of show yeah it still sounds great even if you do it that way and don't use it to the extent of its stereo capabilities so we're going to dive in and really listen to some of these so that you can hear what a drastic difference because again i think you know somebody says like oh a phaser a lot of us would think of like the mxr phase 90 which is a great pedal i'm certainly not going to knock that but you know just like pedal one knob gives you sound. Well how, well, how much can a phaser really do? Well, a phaser can do tons of stuff and from very, very subtly to, again, you know, super like kind of alien sounds. And one of the things that I like about it is I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm super into 70s easy listening. I love classic rock. I love all the, you know, but I love 70s like top 40 and stuff. It's just, there's such great songwriting, such great production. Loads of phasers. You don't even notice necessarily how much of the phaser is on there. fuzz too surprisingly you'd be amazed how many 70s funk disco songs or whatnot had like gnarly fuzz on them including the jackson five i'm getting off topic here my point is is that it's an effect that's actually kind of more ubiquitous than you might expect and because of that it actually sounds quite natural it can sound natural again you can make it sound really really alien but it can sound quite natural i actually didn't realize at first that it by all accounts that I've read, a phaser was used on my favorite guitar song and my favorite guitar solo of all time, Joe Walsh's part in Hotel California, which I was kind of alluding to at that part at the beginning. I didn't play it too close because I don't want the Henley drones to come in and take me out. Let's move on. So with this, you've got your four stage and your six stage. Now the four stage is a little bit more straightforward. You've got speed, mix, and depth, and then you've got three different things for sweep. This one is really great. It can actually get you some vibey type sounds. This is the one that I personally would favor for a general phaser sound. Just classic, something that gives your tone some movement, a nice kind of lush waviness in the EQ. Uh, and you've got your classic, your barber, really kind of gives it this sort of even liftingness like a like a barber pole then when you switch down to envelope it's it's basically like an auto wah essentially i mean it really really changes the effect so right now we're going to jump back in and we're going to listen to it on the just the differences between classic barber and envelope <laughs> Thank you. 
Now for the fourth stage, we are going to max out the mix and the depth and turn the speed up pretty high. And you'll hear it really passes as a really good vibrato. So let's check that out. So now we're going to switch over to the six stage phaser side. I'm going to do the same thing with the resonance and the resonance really kind of adds in more of that throaty kind of, this is why you tune into my channel though, is for, for the dedication that I do to imitating these kinds of effects. Let's go and check out what the resonance does. <laughs> All right, now secondarily, secondary, on the six stage side, you've got this voice knob. Now this is super, super versatile and this is where it gets really cool. This can get all the way up into, the more you turn it up, the more it sounds like different effects, essentially. You can get chorus sounds and what I really, really love about it is you can get a very, very passable rotary speaker tone out of it. So, you know, you could, this is a phaser, but you could have it as an envelope filter and a rotary, or as like a vibrato and a rotary, or as a kind of vibey phaser and a chorus. You could have this as a multi-effect unit that really passes for a lot of these different things just with a few tweaks of the knob. So now we're gonna, I've got the speed up a little bit because I, I like the way it does the, the kind of when you get up to the rotary sound, it really nails a Leslie tone. So we're gonna start with the voice knob back and we're gonna roll it up and hear how this just completely changes the character of the effect. <laughs> Now, a couple cool things. First of all, I do want to say thank you to Strymon. This is a sponsored demo. It's the first time I'm working with Strymon. And again, I'm, I'm very excited. I, I was honestly a little intimidated, again, just because of, of what I mentioned. You know, I, I'm fairly a simpleton when it comes to pedals. And it took a little extra time with the manual for me to get everything on this. In fact, I did a you know reshoot when I kind of looked back and I went, that's how you do that. I'm going to add that in. So, you know, it took me a little extra time with this, but 
it's not like I wasn't having fun. Like, oh, you needed to spend extra time playing a cool modulation pedal. So sad for you. But still, it was very easy to, you know, right off the bat, just plug in and get a good tone. And again, if you want a deep dive, then you can. Uh, again, a lot of different ways you can run it. Uh, stereo, you can run it mono, you can have a stereo in, you can do mono in and stereo out. There are different ways you can set it up. When you press this button down, the lights flash a different color. And then when you change the depth and the voice, it it changes the stereo spread and it changes the, uh, the type of stereo output that you're doing. So again, I just say like, check out the manual on this. Other cool thing, all right, a lot of places give t-shirts and I love my gear t-shirts. I love my gear. socks and I'm there for it. Also came with a power supply, and I really like that because, you know, particularly with a high-end effect, you want to use a high-end power supply, and so I like that the power supply was with it. Now there's just no question like, okay, I'll just use that. So let us know what you think. I know there are a lot of Strymon players out there. There are a lot of you who have more experience with Strymon than I do. My first experience is I I'm very impressed. I thought I would be based on everything that I've read and seen out there. You know, just really high quality, love the enclosure, love the styling. I love the combination of the incredible depth of use that you have out of it, but also the way you can easily just dial in a great tone, even if it's something subtle. I know, you know, a lot of you might look at some pedal boards that have these fleets of Strymon kind of, you know, all neatly done and everything and and might think like, that's, that's a lot, I don't need that much, but even if you use the effect subtly, it's a very high quality effect. So even at a lower level, it's gonna work better for your tone than some other cheaper pedals might. So let us know what you think. Have you tried Strymon pedals? Have you tried the Zelza? Please let us know in the comments. I'm Jack Fawcett. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.